Hey YouTube, how guys doing? My name is Kyle, you know me as Dragonmar, and welcome to a new video. Today we're going over post-plant tips. This has been something that has been requested highly. I'm going to be talking about uh, post-plant, looking at it from the attacker's side. I can of course make a video on retakes, looking at it from the, de the defender's point of view. But we're going to look at how to defend once you've planted the bomb, what you guys can do to give yourself that advantage and win these tough rounds, as well as just some spike planting tips as well, teaching you guys the best spots to plant how you can tell if it's a good spot and all that kind of good stuff got some good things to talk about in this video without any further ado let's get started all right guys let's start things off with tip number one the first few tips are more going to be spike planting tips um just because we have to get that out of the way it's such an important part of defending so tip number one is your priorities the pr first priority is always 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 to get the bomb down a lot of people get this wrong what they'll do is when they get onto the site and they have the bomb They'll hang out here for a while and they'll start clearing stuff. They'll, you know, clear all these different angles, which is important, but that's your team's job. If you are taking a site as a team, the planter's job is to just plant the bomb, right? You know, obviously have your gun out when you're entering the site. If you're coming maybe from sewer or something, you walk out on the site, do your best to clear, and then you plant. Your job is to not turn this corner with the spike and look here or stare up into heaven and wait for someone to peek you. Your job is to plant priorities, guys. You have to know your role in these situations. This gets a lot of people in trouble when they have the bomb and they're running here trying to take fights with people coming CT. This happens a lot even in my games. If you have the bomb, guys, your job is to plant. All right, tip number two are your planting options. What are we looking for when we plant the bomb? You guys know it. We're looking for the most open area, the area that gives us the most angles that we can see the bomb from. So a common mistake on Haven, on a site, is people will plant the bomb right here. Part of the reason they plant the bomb here is because of how close it is to sewer. So what they'll do is they'll run out, they clear close left, and they'll immediately start planting the bomb right here. Now, you guys probably already can tell the problem with this is when you're defending against the um, defenders coming in to attack you and retake the site, so when you're when you're trying to defend them from defusing the bomb, where are you going to stand? You can't stand back here in long. You can't see it from sewer. If you want to peek from sewer, you have to fully swing this corner. You're looking at heaven, CT, right side site, maybe even close left gets a swing on you as well. So what are we looking for when we plant the bomb, guys? We're always looking for open areas. So check this out. If we plant the bomb, rate about... I don't know here. This is actually way better for sewer. Cause if the bomb goes down right here, I'll throw the bomb down. As you can see, you can now peek this bomb with only exposing yourself to this. Oops. <laughs> to this angle here, window can't see you and CT can't see you, but what's the problem? You guys already guessed it, right? Long can't see the bomb. You can wall bang this. This is super common by the way, seeing this plant here. And it always bothers me. Um, because it's like, well, what if you just move the bomb over a little and plant here, right? Isn't this so much easier? So instead, plant the bomb over here. Same thing, sewer. Sewer actually has a better peak, in my opinion, on this on uh, this plant spot. And now Long can see it as well. So open areas. You're looking for the most angles possible. Now, if possible, honestly, you could even put the bomb like, I don't know, maybe here. And this way you could also have this angle this angle, this angle, here, and here. I mean, this is pretty crazy. This is way more um, dangerous, obviously. If you're going for a much safer, but very good option, you want to plant here. This way, Long and Sewer can see you. All right, so the final tip number three, the final tip I want to go over before we get into post-plant stuff is clearing site um, when you're going for an attack here. Now, very important because what ends up happening is, like I said in tip number one, your bomb carrier, their main job is to clear the angles they need you to get onto the site to get the plant down. Your job as the teammate is to clear the other angles. So if you have a player here in sewer, obviously we're smoking off heaven, right? There's no way we're leaving heaven's not smoked. Smoking off CT. So when you come into this site, you know, you clear close right, your, your, your uh, planter can do this. But then your job is to keep coming around the site, clear in hell. And clear CT and make sure no one's lurking back here on the site so they can plant the bomb. This is where a lot of teams really break down in matchmaking is that the planter runs onto site alone. The teammates will stay getting ready for post plant and no one actually clears the site. And you get into those stupid situations where your teammate has the has the spike um, and they're on the site. And then some guy is just going to walk around this 
shoot him in the head, back up, and now you have to like retake sight without the bomb planted. It is so, so stupid. And the simple fix here is to remember, if you do not have the bomb and you are with your teammate who's pushing in to plant, you have to be clearing the site for them, right? And that's the, that's the big thing here. Make sure this site is clear so that that guy isn't just going to lurk site, kill your teammate, and, and, and you guys lose the spike. All right, tip number four, finally some post plant stuff, right? Okay, very, very important, super small thing. This is super small, check this out. If you guys are attacking and planting the bomb, you are the bomb planter, it is your job to call out what you're planting for. So here I would say I'm planting for long and sewer. Boom, that's it. That's all it takes because now your entire team, regardless of where they are, maybe someone's in window, maybe someone's rotating from CT, you guys took sight on A. Now they know exactly where this bomb is planted for. So if the guys coming from window and CT or uh, excuse me, near T spawn want to come over, they can go into sewer because they know they can see it from sewer. They don't have to run over here and double up with me. Very, very small thing to do, but this one small tip is going to help you so much. This communication part of post plant is huge. Being able to talk with your teammates and let them know where you planted the bomb is massive. It means there's no, there's no excuse for not knowing where the bomb is planted at that point, which is a big problem, especially at the lower ranks. So if you guys are the ones planting the bomb, always call out what you planted the bomb for. All right, tip number five. Let's talk about some more aggressive type holds here going for post plant. So let's pretend bomb is down. All right, so bomb planted here. It's planted for sewer, planted for long. Now, Common spots here, you got this cubby over here right around uh, CT, and then you've got hell. Now, this is these are very common positions to play. And tip number five is all about holding crossfires with your teammates. So one of the most important parts of a post plant is trading out kills, right? Because as the attackers enter the site, or excuse me, as the, the defenders enter the site to retake the site and defuse the, the spike, they have to clear a lot of angles because you guys can be anywhere at this point. So it's really important that as they're checking all these angles, you guys are ready to trade kills if if it happens. So very common, crossfire right here. You got a guy in cubby, your guy in hell. You either wait for contact or he plays contact off of you, right? So either you're the one going contact, once you shoot, he swings, or once he shoots, you swing. These are very, very common things to do, but it is so important to understand their value. The same thing goes if someone is um, playing back here. This is a slightly different type of crossfire, but if you have someone playing in this cubby over here to the right, you also probably want someone over here to the left. Why? Because when players push, if someone's going to push down here to try to kill the guy over here, maybe they kill him, but you're right here to be able to shoot him as he comes down. This is incredibly important to understand is that if you play together on post plants, that is how you win. When people start separating, running away from each other, you know, one guy's trying to line up a molly back there or something, and you've got one guy actually here playing the bomb. It's so, so important that people understand that you can win by doing the simple stuff. Have a guy stand here. I'll stand here. I'll cover you. He walks down. I shoot him. He kills you. Easy win, right? We trade out the kills. Very, very important to hold crossfires and help your teammates in their positions. Do not just run away from people. Make sure you guys are on the same page. Tip number six is about playing time. Probably the most important piece of the puzzle when it comes to post plants. A lot of newer players do not understand the concept of how to play time or, or at least how to do it in practice. Maybe in theory, they understand it. So this is probably the biggest thing that I can teach you guys today. And I'm going to talk about a few things here. First and foremost, the bomb, the spike is down for 45 seconds. It takes, what, seven seconds to, def to uh, defuse it, and you can get a half defuse at three and a half. That means that there is less than 40 seconds for the defenders to retake the site and defuse the bomb. This gives you a really, really big advantage, especially if you have a little utility. Little utility goes a long way. Throw some smokes, boom. There's 15 seconds off that the enemy is probably not going to rush through the smokes. They're probably going to wait. But let's talk about playing time on site. So... In a situation where you're in a 1v1 and you hear someone tap the bomb. So let's say the bomb is planted here. You know, I'll throw the bomb down. Boom, it's planted. There's maybe 20 seconds or something left. You know the guy is on site. He taps the bomb, right? So he goes for the defuse on the spike. A lot of people what they do is they go like this and they'll full commit every single time. Just straight up full commits. What's the other option here? What about a little jiggle peek maybe? Just check, hey, is he on the spike? Remember, you will see him diffusing. The spike does change if he is diffusing the spike. If not, it's just that normal white color. You can tell the difference. So you sometimes don't even have to see the player. You can also jump peek if you want to. You could do a lot of things here 
to make it very difficult for this player to defuse the spike, but you do not have to full commit every time someone taps the bomb. Let's say he taps it, I peek, he's not on it. I wait, I wait for him to push me. I hear him tap it again, I check again, he gets off again. I don't have to re-peek. This is, this is the key here. Understanding that now this player either has to stick this bomb because there's so little time left, or he has to push me. So all I have to do is I have to wait for him to tap the bomb again so I can hear him defusing, or I just hold, I, and regardless, I'm holding for the push the entire time, right? I don't, I don't need to be like this, getting ready to swing. No, 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 I'm holding for this push. I'm waiting for him to make that noise over there. I'm assuming, you always assume this guy is pushing you. You always assume he's pushing you. That way you're ready to take this fight. Once you hear it, you say, oh, okay, he's not pushing me. Let me check, let me check. You can even wait a little bit on these as well. Another great thing you do is delay your check. So maybe you wait, I don't know, two to three seconds. So he taps, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Oh, hello. You know, just to make sure once he hits half, you got to be a little bit different because once they get half on it, remember, it is a lot easier from the stick that diffuse. But you guys have to remember, you don't have to peek it every single time, right? You can play mind games here. You can play time. Very, very important to understand that they are the ones that have to defuse this spike and you do not have to rush things. You got to play smart in these situations. All right. Tip number seven. Saving your ultimates for a post plant. So there's a few really, really strong ultimates for a post plant. And, um, but I want to talk a little about how to use them. So we've got Hunter's Fury and uh, Fury. We got Hunter's Fury from Silva and we got Orbital Strike from Brim. Obviously two of the best. Um, and the reason they're so good is because you do not have to be in line of sight of the bomb to be able to use them, right? Brim can stand anywhere. Silva can stand anywhere. Shoot through walls. Doesn't matter. It's not like a, you know, Raze's rocket is awesome, but she has to be able to see the spike to some degree to be able to shoot it. So. With these ults, you generally want to use them uh, on post plants if possible, if it makes sense. However, I want to talk about a huge problem here with saving ults for post plant. What ends up happening is in like a 2v1 or um, a 2v2 even. You guys are, 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 you planted the bomb. Now, your Sova just does this. He just runs away. Bombs down. This dude is out. He's gone. He, he wants nothing to do with the spike anymore. He's standing back here now ready to do this. But guess what? You just planted the bomb. And what did I talk about a lot so far? I've talked about time. So where is your teammate? Well, maybe this guy, for some reason, your teammate, if you're the Sova, is, is he sometimes, maybe he's playing under hell by accident. This isn't what you want to do. And what's going to happen is, oh no, there's two guys left. He's now in a 1v2. If they both swing him, chances are he dies here. Boom, boom, he's dead. Okay, maybe he killed one guy. Doesn't matter. Now, what happens? Your Sova is still sitting back here towards lobby. You tap the spike, boom or the uh, defender taps the spike for the defuse, he has to ult. He has no choice. He ults. Now, this guy can either run like this and shoot him, or, or, wait for it, this is even better. He just chills, he dodges the shots, and then immediately gets on the bomb, gets like a half defuse or something, and waits for you to come, or full defuses, uh, worst case scenario. Maybe he has smoked or something, he smokes it off, he starts defusing. This is the problem. When people play for post plants with ults, they end up just leaving their teammates to die on sight. Do not be one of these people. Communicate with your team. If you are going to run away with your ult, make sure no teammates are on sight. Make sure your teammate comes with you, maybe plays here, helps you with this push, and you guys play for the tap together. You do not want to be in a situation where you're standing back here as a Sova, ready to ult, and your entire team dies on sight, and there's still 40 seconds, or there's like 30 seconds left on the bomb, right? That is just not going to work. You have to be smart with this. A lot of people go very wrong. They think they're doing the right things. You see this all the time in my VOD reviews. They think they're doing the right thing by sprinting away with their ult, but in reality, they're leaving their team to die on sight, and that's just no good. Tip number eight is to save your utility. Things like smokes and mollies in particular. These are incredibly important. Um, it is very, very useful to have mollies and smokes available, especially for bomb um, protection with the molly. If you can molly the bomb off, um, sometimes in situations where you are out heavily outnumbered, simply mauling the bomb with someone like Brim or even Viper can delay that diffuse enough to where even if you peek, you can kill that guy and die, but you've delayed enough time with the molly to defend against it. A lot of people use things preemptively. Do not use them too early in the round or, uh, or in the, uh, in the diffuse or the, um, sort of the spike 
uh, blowing up process, right? You want to wait until about that 20, 25 second mark where you can actually start using that utility to really delay what the defenders have for options. Now, with smokes, like I just said, you don't really want to smoke um, the same sort of angles. You want to make things really difficult for the enemies and you want to make your peaks as easy as possible. So in this situation, if I'm playing long, I do not want to deal with heaven, right? I don't want to deal with heaven at all. So if I have one smoke left, I'm always smoking off heaven. This way, my peak here could be entirely contained to players on site. Very, very important. A lot of people get a little too panicky with their smokes. They'll use them too early. The later you can use them in the round, the better. Obviously, early on is good. There are ups and downs to both, but just try to save something here. Try to save something for, for post-plant, especially if you're playing someone like Omen with regenerating smokes. You can get a lot of value out of them on these post-plants. So tip number nine for post-plant is holding flanks. I want to talk about how to actually hold flanks. And uh, one of the big problems I see with lower ranks who are defending post-plant and have to hold flanks is what ends up happening is they'll play way too far away from the bomb. Um, so what ends up happening is your team is all playing on site. Maybe you're the guy defending back here. You're here. Your team is dead on site. A guy comes behind you, shoot him. The problem here is you now have to literally sprint to the spike. So when you're playing um, for a flank, if you are holding the flank for your team, you want to be as close as you can to the spike and to a normal post plant position as possible. So instead of playing in this corner, right, you know, like right here in lobby, defending this flank, instead, I would probably play down here in sewer. And I would hold something like this. This way, no one can see me from up top here, but I'm still holding this and I'm close enough to where if my team needs me, I can get up here in about a second or two and shoot the diffuser, right? Very, very important to remember this. This is a big, big problem. People forget how long it takes to run. I mean, check this out. If I start here, you know, you're counting the seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five six hey spikes diffused we've lost right it's that simple but these little tips doing little things like this are going to make a huge difference understanding that holding the flanks from closer to the spike is always going to be the best option also remember if you have something like a trip or a camera here you do not have to be looking at this all the time wait for that to break play with your teammates very very important you're playing with your team on these post plans leaving people alone is often when you find yourself losing them because they just drop by flies one by one because the enemy team tends to played together more on a retake as opposed to when you're playing post plant tip number 10 is kind of similar to the idea of crossfires and tip number five but it's about covering teammates and covering angles that they cannot cover themselves so this one is just really good advice regardless of uh, if you're in post plant or not but i want to talk about this probably in the most simple way i can so let's say we're taking sight here or let's say uh excuse me bomb is down right we have we have planted i've got my smoke down as well i'm gonna throw a smoke there now if I have a player playing right here in the sewer, you know, they're holding this angle. And then I have someone over here on the box. This person here should absolutely be holding this walk up angle, right? They should be holding like this. You know, there is no reason this person should just be hiding because what's going to happen is this player here is playing for the diffuse, but the enemy can walk up on them like this. They can walk up on them like this. So it's really important that if you are sitting here, you're playing for this, unless you have some sort of like, oh man, unless you have some plan, obviously where being, you know, not giving away your, your position and your teammate knows about it. But this guy is relying on you to make sure no one is walking up right here. So that is your job. Another great example of this, like I was showing you earlier, if you're playing down here, you're playing for um, the diffuse, right? You got a guy in this cubby here, you got a guy over here. Your job here, because you have the more advanced angle, is to hold like this. Make sure someone is not going to walk down like this onto your teammate and shoot him in this corner. Likewise, this player here, your job is to be jiggling like this to make sure no one is walking down this wall right here. These are very, very simple concepts. But on post plants, people tend to hide too much. Like instead of sitting here, your teammate might just hide around this corner and chill or something because he knows you're there. He knows he's not in danger. This is very selfish behavior. You guys need to learn to take the slightly more aggressive position to make sure your teammate doesn't get walked on like that. And in this way, you guys can secure um, this position for each other and it allows you to swing together as a team, making sure that nobody is there to kill you. Very, very simple stuff, but very important to understand the proper technique for actually covering angles so that your team doesn't get walked up on because that is a huge problem in post plan is you'll have a guy hiding, someone walks up, kills your teammate, then, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, he ends up turning at you, you die as well and you got no trades out of it, nothing. Very important to 
understand you're covering these angles for your team, regardless of where you are in post plant, even if you're not holding a crossfire. All right, guys, and that is going to do it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I definitely like to make a video on retakes as well, since I think, you know, so now that we have one on how to defend a post plant, well, how do you attack, right? How do you retake a site once the bomb is down? So I think that could be a lot of fun. If you guys enjoyed the video, remember, leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more. Tap that bell to be notified when I post anything new, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy and peace.